Okay, in this video, for the first time, we're going to look at uh, integration using horizontal rectangles. And we'll do it a couple ways. First of all, using a single function, and then we'll find the area between two functions. But before we get into that, let's quickly review uh, use the area using vertical rectangles. Now, if you use vertical rectangles, what you're going to find is the area between the fun some function of x and the x-axis. So using this specific example, it would look something like this. Uh, we'll go from here straight up to here. And what I want to find is this kind of lightly shaded blue area down in here. <clears throat> and to do that, we'll use vertical rectangles. Now what the rectangles actually look like would be something like this. If you start here and go up, then across, and then down, uh, there would be a single rectangle. Now the height of that rectangle is f of x. The width of that rectangle would be dx. <clears throat> so when you set up your integral, you're going to integrate it from x equals 0 to x equals 4. So everything is in terms of x, and the limits would look like this. They'll go from here across to here. So from there to there. Now when you set this problem up, it's going to look like this. It'll be the integral from x equals 0 to x equals 4 of f of x dx. So everything will be in terms of x. So in this particular problem, it would look like this. From 0 <clears throat> to 4, um, f of x is equal to x squared dx. Now, if you found that antiderivative, you would have x cubed divided by 3 from 0 to 4. <clears throat> and if you evaluated that, you would wind up with six, uh, 4 cubed would be 64 thirds. So you would get 64 thirds. And what this would be, <clears throat> that would be this light shaded blue area here uh, between the curve and the x-axis. So if you did this, everything is in terms of x. But now, <clears throat> suppose you wanted the following. Rather than having everything in terms of x, suppose you wanted to put find the area between the curve and the y-axis. Now, in that case, it'll change a couple things here. We'll go up here and uh, extend this line across. So starting right here, uh, we'll go this way. Okay. Now, what that's going to give you will be this. Now, each one of your rectangles will look like this. We'll put a, uh, this time a horizontal rectangle in here. So the rectangle would start here and go over like this, uh, down like this, and over like this. So now what you're going to have, <coughs> uh, the length of this rectangle right here would be in terms of y. So it would be some function of y and the thickness of the rectangle would be dy. So you're going to go from some y equals something down here to some y equals something up here. And what that's going to give you will be from here to here, uh, you'll integrate it vertically. So now you have a horizontal rectangle. The length of the rectangle is f of y. The width of the rectangle is this. So you'll actually wind up with something that would look like this. You're going to find the integral from y equals something to y equals something of f of y. Whoops, sorry, y. dy. <clears throat> so put the whole thing in terms of y. So the steps involved in this, the first thing you've got to do if you want to find horizontal rectangles, if you've got, right now you've got this, you've got y is equal to some function of x. Well, you want to find x as a function of y. So the steps would look something like this. We'll put it right here. Step one. So step one, uh, you want to find f of y. So to find f of y, since you know that y is equal to x squared, you can write it like this. x squared is equal to y. So solve this for x. Take the square root of both sides. x, then, would be equal to the square root of y. And what that is, that's f of y. So f of y 
would be equal to the square root of y. So now you've got the function in terms of y. Uh, next thing you've got to do, you've got to find what are the y limits. So from y equals something up here to something down here. So what are the y limits? So this would be step two. So step two is find the y limits. And to do that, you can just use your x limits. So you know when, um, when x is equal to 4, then y is equal to, and take the 4 and plug it in up here into x squared. Then y would be equal to 4 squared, which would be 16. So you know that this one up here is 16. Then uh, find the lower limit. So when x is equal to 0, y is equal to, and again plug it into x squared, you'd have 0 squared, which would be 0. So you know that this one is 0. So you're going to integrate this from, on this particular problem, you're going to integrate it from 0 to 16. But everything is going to be in terms of y. Okay, so you go into the third step. So step number three is just to evaluate it. So if you evaluated the integral, but this time everything's in terms of y. So you'll put it f of y dy, and it looks like this. So if you do that, here's what you'd have. This would be the integral from 0 to 16 of f of y, but f of y is the square root of y. So this is going to be the square root of y dy. But remember the square root of something is like having it to the one half power, so that's going to give you uh, y to the one half dy. Well when you found that antiderivative you would have the antiderivative, now remember add two halves to both sides, this would be y to the three halves divided by three halves evaluated from 0 to 16. Again, take the fraction, turn it upside down. So this would be equal to 2 thirds of y to the 3 halves evaluated from uh, 0 to 16. Okay, we'll finish it up down here. Go ahead and plug in the 16, and that would be equal to 2 thirds of 16 to the 3 halves power, and then minus 0. Now the way to do this one, uh, this, the, the square root of 16 is 4. Uh, 4 cubed would be 64. So this is going to be 2 thirds of, and then uh, this would be 64, which gives you 128 thirds. And what this is, this would be, we'll sort of do it in this shape right here. This would be this area uh, between the function and the y-axis. So that area is 128 thirds. The area below the axis is 64 thirds. But your steps, actually kind of three steps in this process. Uh, step number one, um, find the function in terms of y. Step number two, change the limits in terms of y. And step number three would be to evaluate. But you've got to get everything in terms of y. So if you want the area uh, between the function and the x-axis, use vertical rectangles and put everything in terms of x. Put a little uh, dividing line between these two here. So, uh, <clears throat> again, for the area between the function and the x-axis, put everything in terms of x. If you want the area between the function and the y-axis, put the entire problem in terms of y, including both the function and the limits, and solve. And that will give you uh, the area between the function and the y-axis using horizontal rectangles. Now what this is, this is an example using a single function. Now let's take a look at a second example um, 
in which you want to find the area between two functions. Okay, now here's what we've got. Um, You have uh, two different relationships here, and what we've got is a function on the left, or let's just put it this way, an expression on the left and one on the right. Now, let's first of all assume that you tried to do this using vertical rectangles using a technique that we've discussed before. What you would do is this. You need to find the intersection points. So you'd find this intersection point, and you'd find this intersection point, and what that would give you, and we'll kind of come down from here, uh, from here to here. You would evaluate it from here to here. <clears throat> so this would be from x equals something to x equals something. Now if you did that, your rectangles would look like this. They would be vertical rectangles. They would look something like this right here. And when you put them in there, you'd have one that would go from here up to here. And then each of your rectangles, as you fill these things in, would look like this. Now what you've got there is the width of each rectangle would be dx and the height of this rectangle right here would be the top function minus the bottom function. Well, everything would be in terms of x. Now there's a problem with that. If you look at it, what will happen is that you would get all of this area, we'll again kind of shade it in black here, you would get this entire area here but notice that would not give you the whole area between the curve. We'll do it in green. What you're not accounting for, you have not accounted for this area out here. So going using vertical rectangles and putting everything in terms of x from those intersection points doesn't work. So in this case, it would be a great place to use horizontal rectangles. So watch what happens if you use horizontal rectangles. So We'll go down to here now and switch to horizontal rectangles. If we did this, now each rectangle will look something like this. We're going to still use the same intersection points, but we'll change things around a little bit. Rather than going uh, from some x equals something to x equals something, we'll do this. We'll go from here to here. And what that's going to give you would be this. So we're going to go from some y equals something to y equals something. And in this case, you'll have horizontal rectangles. So the rectangles will look like this. Now, if you do them this way, then each the thickness of each rectangle would be dy. And the height of the rectangle would be this function, or let's say this one minus this one. So this length minus this length. Now, in the if you're using it in terms of x, what we did was this. So remember, you might remember the formula. We did the integral of the top function minus the bottom function. That's if you wanted to find the area between two functions. Um, using vertical, this is if you use vertical rectangles. Well now what we're going to have, we're going to have horizontal rectangles and it will actually wind up being this. It's going to be, in, in broad terms, it would be the integral of the function on the right minus the function on the left. So in the interval that we're interested in, this would be the left function right here or pardon me, this is going to be the right function. So in this interval, this function right here is on the right-hand side of the interval. This one's on the left-hand side, so this is going to be the left. So you've got the one on the right minus the one on the left. Now, the steps will be very similar to what you've done before. So We've got to repeat the first steps of put everything in terms of y, find the y limits, and then solve the problem. So we'll go back to our same steps that we used on that last problem. Step number one is uh, find f of y uh, for both. Well, on the first one, it's already in terms of y. We'll call this... Uh, f of y, 
So this will be f of y. And later on we'll call this one g of y. So we know that f of y is equal to y squared divided by 2 minus 3. So that's the one on the left. Now let's find the one on the right. Well, the one on the right, you've got, um, we'll call it uh, x minus 1. You know that x minus 1 is equal to y, so take the 1 from this side, move it over this side, and you get x is equal to y plus 1, and that is, we'll call this one uh, g of y. So g of y is equal to y plus 1. So what you've done, you've changed it from uh, a function in terms of x to a function in terms of y. So now you know that g of y is equal to y plus 1. So you've got your two functions. Okay, the next thing you got to do, you've got to figure out um, from y equals what to y equals what. So what are going to be the limits on integration? Because you're going to integrate this from, this will be dy, you're going to integrate it from y equals something to y equals something. So step two, to find the limits of integration, set the two things equal to each other and solve for y. So step two, set both functions equal to each other. So set f of y equal to g of y and solve for y. So this gives you y squared divided by two minus three. There's the first one is equal to uh, y plus 1. Now since you've got a 2 in the denominator, go ahead and multiply each thing by 2, which will get rid of this, so the 2. So this will turn into y squared minus 6 is equal to 2y um, plus 2. So all you did there was multiply each thing by 2. This one times 2, this one times 2, this one times 2, and this one times 2. And that gets you that. Now let's go ahead and solve this thing. Uh, I'll take the 2y and bring it over here, and I get y squared minus 2y, and then bring the 2 over, this becomes minus 8 is equal to 0. Now factor that, that'll factor into a y uh, minus 4 times a y plus 2. Then take each factor and set it equal to 0. Set that one equal to 0, set that one equal to 0. And what that's going to give you is this. <clears throat> it will give you uh, y minus 4 is equal to 0, so y is equal to 4, and there's your first limit, and then you've got y plus 2 is equal to 0, so y is equal to a negative 2, and there's your second limit. So if you look back at your picture, here's what you've got. Um, y is equal to 4, you want to go from here, and then y is equal to a negative 2 is right here. So you're going to evaluate this thing from, from a, a negative 2 to 4 using horizontal rectangles that will look something, we'll kind of sketch them in, it'll look something kind of like this. They'll go horizontally going this way. And you're going to get the area between those two uh, lines. Okay, let's go on to step 3. And what step 3 is, is just this. Evaluate the right one minus the left one. So let's do that. Now the one on the right, first of all, which one is which? The one on the right is uh, g of y. The one on the left is f of y. So let's plug them in, and it's just a matter of evaluating them from there. So we go on to step three. So what step three looks like is just evaluate the interval. So this is going to be the integral from, let's just do it in black, stay consistent. So this is going to be the integral from y equals negative 2 
to y equals 4 of the right function, which is y plus 1. So this would be y plus 1 minus the left function, or the left relationship, which would be y squared divided by 2 minus 3. So this is going to be y squared divided by 2 minus 3 dy. So again, that's nothing more than the right one. So the one on the right minus the one on the left. Okay, now in the next step, go ahead and distribute this negative. So what that's going to be would be the integral from n from minus 2 to 4 of y plus 1. Then distribute the negative to both these. That will become minus y squared divided by 2. 2 negative will make a positive. That will turn into a plus 3. So what that'll become will be the integral from negative 2 to 4. Uh, you've got the y. Then uh, here's minus y squared divided by 2. And take the 1 and the 3, and you can go ahead and put those two together and get a plus 4 dy. Okay, from here on out, it's just a matter of solving this integral. So find the antiderivative of this which would be y squared divided by 2. Then you've got minus 1 half of y cubed divided by 3. Then plus 4y, all evaluated from a negative 2 to a positive 4. All right, go ahead and plug in the 4, and you'll have 4 squared divided by 2 minus, you can multiply the two denominators together, and you'll get, uh, this will be 4 cubed divided by 6, and then finally plus 4 times 4. So there it is with the top number plugged in, then minus, now plug in the bottom number. This will be negative 2 squared divided by 2 minus a negative 2 cubed divided by 6 uh, plus 4 times a negative 2. So plug in the top number, plug in the bottom number. And that will get you to, um, this is going to become 4 squared is 16 divided by 2 would be 8 minus, this will be 64 6 plus 16 minus, um, this will be 4 divided by 2 would be a 2 minus, and then this becomes a minus 8, so minus 8 6, take the positive of it, you'll have a plus 8 6, this will turn into a positive 8 over 6, and then finally uh, minus 8. Okay, so that gets you to um, add the 8 and the 16 together. That'll be 24 minus, and you can divide both of these by 2, which would get you to 32 thirds minus um, 6 minus two, 8 would be a negative 6. So negative 6 plus, and we'll go ahead and change this one to four-thirds. So that's going to be, and go ahead and put, since this one's over three, put this one over three. That'll get you to 72 thirds minus 32 thirds minus, and then do the same thing with this one, put them both over three. That'll be minus 18 thirds plus four-thirds. So if you add those together, uh, 72 minus 32 would be 40 thirds minus, this would be a minus 14 thirds. And then finally, if you add those two together, you would get 54 thirds 
which will turn out to be 18. So that's going to be the area between those two. So the area in between. <clears throat> now let's go back up the top and take one last kind of a summary for the whole thing. So we'll go back up to here. Remember what you had to start with was here's you want to find the area in between these two but using horizontal rectangles. So the basic formula is going to be this right here. Uh, the integral of the right one minus the left one but everything in terms of y. So the first step uh, put everything in terms of y for both the one on the left and the one on the right. Uh, second step, you've got to find the new y limits. So you want to find it from y equals negative 2 to y equals 4. So set the two y's equal to each other. Solve for x and that'll, or solve for y and that will give you uh, your new limits. So you're going to integrate it from negative 2 to 4. And then finally the last step, it's just a matter of running through the integral. And it's just the integral of the right one minus the left one from these limits if you go through just your normal integration and take care of all the fractions, you finally wind up with the fact that the area between these is uh, 18. So what that is, that's say uh, how to find you working with horizontal rectangles on a single function and also working with horizontal rectangles uh, to find the area between two functions.